Hey Neil, how you doing? I'm doing well, how are you? Good, it's episode 37 of the Strength Hammer podcast. It's late, but it's gonna be here. It's late because of, it. yeah, it's late because of me mostly. Uh, I, I made that sound like I'm pushing it, pushing that blame off. It's me, I I was the one that was away, I was the one that got a little bit of concrete. And... <laughs> all, all, all you had during the first time I said, hey, let's record to catch up was, oh, I'm going to a, a daddy-daughter dance. It's like, how dare you be a good father? <laughs> how dare you be a loving husband, good father, and a wonderful gentleman, sir? Well, I, I found out um, that we are now on the stage that uh, I am nothing but an embarrassment, so um, that's Ooh. what I learned from, from that. <laughs> So. Gotcha. You're at the you're in the dad's embarrassing face. Yep. All right. Well, hey, look, the pictures look cute that I saw on Facebook that your wife put up. They're very cute. Yeah. But yeah. Back from Kansas City. Um. Yes. Yeah, so I apologize, everybody. I'm gonna try. I don't have a. I don't have a cough button. I'll try not to cough. I feel like I have a cough right now because I'm talking about coughing. So I'll cough away from the mic. But yeah, a little bit of con crud. But I'm out of it. So should be good. But uh, before we talk about Kansas City. Lots of news lately, some releases, some exciting announcements with between uh, club interchange deals of members. Do you want to do you want to hit anything first, Neil? Well, um, I mean, I don't know. This is more your news than it is mine. I mean, it's becoming my news. It is. It is. Uh, Cole McGinnigal. Um, if anyone if you know him, he's the reason why I wasn't at the Chicago uh, U.S. Open, because he was a dear friend and club mate. And now he's abandoning me and he's. I, I was prepping him to take over the, the local club, Ligonier Legion, and be the 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 benevolent king that it ultimately needed to be. I I uh I, I figured I was a transitionary role, you know, for a decade or two and then, then I'd pass that torch. But no, he's running all the way to Ohio and wouldn't you know it? Right near Akron. Right up by the Ren Four territory. Well, like any any good corporation um you know we got to steal the top talent you know to keep that uh that pipeline open and so uh now cole is uh unbeknownst to him going to be the heir apparent to ren four i know uh, he's it's... living in or coming towards akron ohio he's 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 pre-groomed i mean he's ready i wish i wish you were offering something in trade but i mean it, it's like looking at the cleveland browns over there like what a, like you know what do I need? Like, there's nothing in that pile of trash that I need, so. I will offer my condolences, <laughs> my friend. You know what? That's probably more than I would get. <laughs> <laughs> it's may, maybe, maybe as recompense at some time when I'm up over at the Rent4 area, maybe, maybe Cole will put me up and it's not just relying on your, uh, your and Dave's kindness out there. Maybe, maybe Cole can, can fill that role. Let's, let's hope. Look at us fighting over Cole. See, speaking of dances, Cole's got to feel like the pretty girl at the dance right now. Oh my gosh! I mean, just got married. All right, so he's 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 you know, starting family. He's he's switching jobs. Um, and and kudos to him because I mean, for sure, that's a that's an up in that paycheck there. He's been smart about so many things, and now he's going from one of the best Warhammer clubs to one of the other best Warhammer clubs, right. and right. uh and. <laughs> gorgeous yeah. beard oh gorgeous yeah Lo beard. lovely beard lovely beard i mean i and actually he's got everything that he needs for his idineth army to run pretty much any list now except for oops all turtles so like i mean the man's in heaven oops I, all turtles well wow, that'd be that's an investment in time and in money oh my goodness it is it is he's 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 he'll if he keeps on it he'll be like me with daughters of cain he'll just have way too much and it's going to be wonderful mm -hmm. <laughs> yes Cole, I, I know you're not leaving yet, but you will be missed. We'll, uh, we'll uh, pour out a Guinness for you at the first club day that you're not there because you're in you're in the wasteland that is Ohio. But uh, and then we'll get kicked out because we'll be dumping a Guinness on the floor. <laughs> the chaos wastes. The chaos. Oh, I love that. You need the chaos wastes. I mean, you're kind of you're. Not really north. I mean, it would be ah. Uh, now nah, we we'll figure out later. Yeah, my Nagaron. I think I said be that. Yeah, this is Nagaron. That's that's fine. There's, there's of course, our rife with beast spin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Nagaron, I I do have to call this out because I, I put it on Twitter. It made me chuckle. It was the best roast Matt had given me in a while. Um. 
he posted a meme of Chuck has taken more witch elves off the table than anyone else in the world. And it's not because I've killed them, everybody. It's not because <laughs> I'm killing my opponents. I'm, I, I guess I am killing them. They're mine. I'm removing more of my... I've removed more witch elves because... Me. He called me bad. But it was a fun. It was a fun compliment because I'm still a world, world first, I guess. <laughs> Gotta be first in something. You ain't first, you last. Ricky mm-hmm. Bobby. Whatever that movie was. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Cole, you'll be missed. Um, I'll say that. There's been some uh, some releases for Sigmar Neil, right? Mm-hmm. Today, some stuff went up on pre-order. So there's... And oh, yeah, we're recording Saturday, November 5th. Um, uh, two holidays today. Remember, remember the 5th of November. And apparently this is when Doc Brown invented the flux capacitor. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. November 5th, 1997, I think. <laughs> 87 eight, probably 87 yeah it was nobody under the age of 30 knows what we're talking about right now no no one does <laughs> well but that's what this podcast is i don't think anyone under the age of 30 is listening to this podcast no, unless uh, unless <laughs> dave unless you have your son in, on in the background listening in which case hi don't say the word fuck um <laughs> <laughs> at least not at school <laughs> um but yes, uh, yeah, we had, what, uh, the Slaves of Darkness army box, so it's not the full Slaves of Darkness release, because there's a new models coming out for that, new battle tome, um, and this is like that, that really nice, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've said it before, I'm a mark for these boxes, you get the collector's edition book, you get, uh, you know, Legion's cards, special stuff, you get models and also the books are really like you, you can't just buy the slaves of darkness book right now even though it's been leaked online um uh-huh. <laughs> but yeah you can actually get the book that way which is exciting um and awful because i'm a to mm-hmm. <laughs> so what if yeah like someone wants to use at the u.s finale like they want to use slaves of darkness do I make them have the book or not? I, <laughs> like it's out, yeah. but you can't get. Uh, uh, it's frustrating. Yeah, I've been getting confused between like all the the various leaks and what's coming out and what's 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 been leaked and what's being pre ordered. I, I don't. Even, I've lost yeah, all track. It's <laughs> well, I, I I actively just ignore leaks. They're not something that interests me. Um, me neither, but I, it's hard not to hear about them. Yeah, you open up Twitter, uh, and and that's just kind of what goes on. But yeah, and then like, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like every content creator knows, like oh, we're just talking about the new Slaves of Darkness battle to him today. I'm like, haven't you done this for seven weeks in a row? Like, is there just like yeah. one new War Scroll that got leaked out again? Like, I'm surprised Games yeah. Workshop didn't just be like, here's the book on PDF, whatever, have fun, guys. Yeah, goodness. <laughs> I, I mean, that was a bad leak. That was uh, wherever that, where that, wherever that happened in Chain. Hope they resolve that. Shame, that was a bad one. <laughs> and then, uh, I, I, like I said, I'm excited for that book. I did not get that box because uh, I had to buy a plane ticket today, um, and I have to buy a Taylor Swift tickets next week. Not next week. Two week. Week and a half from now, on the fifteenth, because uh, she's coming back to Pittsburgh. So, hell yeah, mm-hmm. Taylor Swift coming to town. Um, I'm actually, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm tempted. I, I like this new Slaves Army so much. I used to have one. And I traded it. Uh, um, Dave's <laughs> Dave's kid Tommy was was getting into slaves, so I traded him all my stuff right. um, for his uh, his Seraphon army. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I might have to see if he's interested in a uh, Soulblight Grave Lords army in uh, straight up trade for that stuff. I think that's a fair uh, trade. Yeah, looking, looking pretty good. So this, slaves is just a fun army. Yeah, and, and the new book is is looking pretty good. So hopefully you can yeah. make that happen. They said I, I got to I, at first, though, I thought you you were saying that you were excited and you were thinking of actually going to the Taylor Swift concert with me because I need someone to go with. Oh, God, no, no. I, I can't afford those tickets. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure what they are, but I'm quite sure they're out of my price range, especially for you where you'd want to be. Uh, I can't. I, I'm OK. I, I do. Have, I do have a rule like I, I really enjoy Taylor Swift and there's a there's a set limit. I'll pay for tickets. Um, I think the tickets are going to be probably after taxes between two fifty and three hundred for the cheap seats. Uh, Just think you could be up in the front row popping your pecs. Maybe you get pulled up on stage. Huh? I, I I doubt it. Plus, I have a hard and fast rule that <laughs> <laughs> the most I will 
unless you're my wife, I'm not paying five hundred dollars for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like that's like if my wife was like, "Hey, I need something that's five hundred dollars." Absolutely, whatever it is, more than whatever oh, you need, wow. I'll, I'll I'll do it. But like for Taylor Swift, she wants five hundred dollars just for me to be closer to her in a concert. Mm, no, I'm I'm gonna go to the concert, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I have a I have a cap. <laughs> I have a cat. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a there's a cap to what uh I'm willing willing to spend. But like I said, I I want to go to one concert, so and she doesn't do tours all the time and, and from what I've seen on the documentary where I watched it, it is a show. So sure it'll be it'll be oh. fun. And and I do hope my, my wife will probably go with me. I, I maybe. We'll see. I don't know. She's not a diehard fan like me. But you know, everyone here is taught you know. I'm sure you're all here for the Taylor Swift talk. Um, mm -hmm. you know, just, just check check her Twitter or Instagram to find out where she's going and head to the venue. Or if you're in the Pittsburgh area, I'll see you there in the cheap seats. Maybe uh, we can get uh, Taylor Swift to sponsor this podcast. Maybe do an intro for us. What do you think? You know, I'm stupid enough to ask. You know what? You should. But you know it's not going to make it anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you, Chuck, you should. She She's a woman of the people. She is. She is. I mean, hey, if for, if for any reason I have a chance to meet Taylor Swift and get a video, I'd be like, hey, can you say, hey, it's the Strength Hammer podcast? That's what I'll do. And then, then that, that, you know, that'll be it. And I'll be like, life, life's complete. And then I'll stop podcasting after I do one episode with that. <laughs> It'd be amazing. It would be amazing. Like, no, it's, and like I say, I, I joke. I like, I'm looking forward to the concert. I'm, will, I'm willing to pay the price for the ticket. I, you know, but also too like, I, if I was ever to pay a lot of money to go see Taylor Swift like close in person, I'd probably pay to be like the a meet and greet type thing. I'm not gonna pay and take, and be like you know, the two hundred ten pound muscle, thirty six year old, in the cheap <laughs> seats with all the, you know, preteen <laughs> girls. I'm like, no, that's. It's not what I'm not. I just want to listen to her music and have a good night. I'm not I'm not trying to get in anybody's way or ruin anyone's fun or like get awkward looks from parents. Like, no, I'm just here for I like the music. Regardless, uh, Ogre Matra is trash coming out just to shift away from topics. Um, that one that went on pre order. Uh, I think people are excited for that book. Are you excited? I, for that I book? don't, you know, I, I haven't heard Dave talking too much about it. I, I don't, I don't really know too much about it either. So, I mean, you'd think Dave would be all over it, but I haven't heard much. Is it, I don't know. Is, is Dave suffering the burnout? I'm not going to blame know. him if he has. Like, it's a, it's an addition where burnout's happening with people. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Happens with me too. Like I said, yeah. the, this last trip kind of re revitalized me a little bit more to, you know, do a little bit more Age of Sigmar. Then maybe mm -hmm. I have been, but like I, I feel it. Like it's a, it's not everyone's uh cup of tea for this edition. So yeah, hopefully. Well, the other thing too is like at one at some point, like you get so many armies, and you feel like you're just buying army books all the time, but not playing your army. I mean, that is me, <laughs> literally right now. Um, I have the you Lumineth know, book. Always... I have the Lumineth book, and I haven't played that army. I had uh, I bought the, not this most recent Zinch book. But the one prior to AOS 2's book. Right. And um, I never actually played it. I sold the army before I ever actually played it. Now, I'm sure that happens to a lot of people. Yeah. But that is not something I do. Right. And so <laughs> that's why I've I started the purge for me, trying to cut down a little bit on my armies. No, I, I understand. I, I'm, I'm not purging, but I am actively slowing the purchase of armies because I could, if I, I'm only Fire Slayers and Seraphon short of having every order army. And like Wow. Yeah, and I'm like, mmm. Mm. Like, they interest me. Seraphon probably well, Seraphon I'm getting more interested in, but it's like especially Seraphon, I could contrast that in a week mm -hmm. <laughs> to not play it for anything. Fire Slayers no wouldn't be that hard either. They're very similar, you know, unit to unit, so like I could knock out that in like a quick succession so it's like i already have a horse heresy army that i put in a box because i'm never going to play it like because no one around me plays it yet so i'm just trying to slow my roll and just paint random things till new elf and once we get a new elf book though i, I promise you i'm just going to buy a new army there yeah yeah still waiting on those uh malarian high elves 
Still or, wait. Not Malarian or, High Elves. Dark Elves, whatever. Malarian Dark Elves, and then yeah. we'd have Tyrion would be other half of Lumineth, I guess, as far as the what the lore tells us. Yeah. <laughs> really should be Age of Elves. Should be the it should be, it. especially if we eventually get like the Karnathi as like their own part <laughs> of Sylvaneth. I love that like Cities doesn't have like really its own army still. It's still a bunch of like old holdover crap. <laughs> and we've got like 17 elf armies, which is amazing. It's... And never change, GW, never change. Oh, hey, I mean, I love that. It's what sells that in that Cronspire. Well, I mean, well, there was the balance update. I guess I should, shouldn't just throw out Cronspire. I think Cronspire is still going to be around. But yeah, we just had the balance update that dropped uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. the day before the US Open began. So unfortunately, we weren't able to use it um, because people had flown in by that time and we weren't going to use points changes and ruin people's armies. Sure. But, uh, yeah, no, that's 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 all well and good. I'm looking forward to see how it affects things going forward. I, th- I think there's two events going on right now. There's the Runax in Australia, which is a teams, and then there's the Weird Knobs. Uh, it might be I can't tell if it's an invitational or what it is. It's out in Texas. It's uh one of the Texas crews down there. They're running an event, so I'm kind of curious how the uh, meta might shift with the uh, new balance update. I'm excited to see if Stormcast maybe make a comeback. They got nice points drops on things that are good. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's I think that covers most of the news. Yeah, it was Taylor Swift concert, Battle Slate, Ogre, Slaves of Darkness. Oh, I got Oh, we got we got, got one more. Oh yeah, call me then. Um Brewhammer sign ups are coming December 3rd, about a month away right now. December third, so ten AM. So we're a little under a month. It's at it's, this point. So actually it's like eleven AM. So I'm just kidding. No, it is 10 a.m. <laughs> no, keep keep rolling for that. Gotta make sure you get a spot. <laughs> I really want to go. I wasn't able to make it last year. Um, yeah. I think it was something with the U.S. Open. I think I was waiting because yes, yeah, it, it was something weird like that. But um, maybe that's something else going on. Maybe it was. Oh, no, maybe I had a work trip. I don't know. I switched. No, I I had just switched jobs. That's what it was. I literally mm-hmm. switched jobs at the yeah, and I didn't. And then yeah. Okay. Anyway. I'm rambling. Um, So it's 10.05 for most of the world and 10 o'clock for anybody that I know. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So once I get my ticket, I'll be, I'll be thrilled. (laughs) You you may, you, all all of you uh, peasants out there may sign up after, after we we give you the go ahead. (laughs) Just give me a shot. Yeah. It looked like such a great event. I, I'm sad I missed it, but I'm, I'm definitely wanting to get to it this year. Uh, So you know, for those of you uh, who are listening who are unaware of the uh, um, tournament, it goes on um, at a bar, um, Northern Columbus, and uh, there's 40 people that are coming to it. They do a lot of work uh, for charity when you're mm-hmm. there. They they had more prize support um, for especially for like a mid tier. Um, they they do a lot of work with the guard tower, but they also got sponsors and. Um, then you can buy your way yeah, got, into chances at the prize they, support by buying tickets for charity. They got so army good. painters. A, I, I yeah. Know. Actually, if you listen back on the, like a year, a little less than a year ago, we interviewed uh, uh, Stephen Mata, me and you, and we talked about the Brewhammer, mm-hmm. and I think we ran through all that. So definitely check out that older episode. Just to, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. get a feel for yeah. what that event is. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a great event, and I want to see it grow, and I want to participate in it. Mm-hmm. And they they thought about growing from what I was talking to Chris, who's the TO who runs it, um, but they just didn't have that. They, they thought that there's no, there wasn't the room to go up. So, yeah. I, and I think that's fine. That's that's a that's a great decision. Um, yeah, no, yeah, not every you don't want to lose. Yeah, yeah, not every event has to grow. Like uh, Steve Steve Herner, he doesn't grow the Holy Wars and Holy Havoc, uh, mm-hmm. and I think he made the right call in doing that. It makes it he keeps it special. Because mm-hmm. I'll be honest, as I get older. Um, going to like the Adepticons and Novas aren't always as exciting for me. <laughs> right. Like right. after after this whole COVID thing, like not that I'm worried about that anymore, but I'm just kind of like, man, just I don't like always leaving my home. My home is my nice place. So these closer events are mm-hmm. still big enough to draw some friends in. Are pretty pretty nice to have around to fill those those needs for yeah. Warhammer events. Yeah, absolutely. But all for all you young kids, you go have those big fun events. I'm gonna be an old curmudgeon at the age of 37 I'm, I'm trying to figure out what army i'm going to bring um and it's very possible that i may show up there with just a bunch of caradron boats 
lose every single game, but just enjoy the hell out of uh, making flubber noises and pushing some boats around. So what if what if Games Workshop like out of nowhere is like, hey, beginning of next year, new blades of corn. No, that if it was and new it was, blades, and it, was, of corn, and it was out in time, and you're just like, okay, are you gonna go back to your corn ways? Oh, absolutely, without a, without a doubt. Cool. So. Nah, yeah. for sure. I mean, wouldn't, I, even, be, wouldn't even be a discussion. Yeah, I so. would, I would plan for my daughter's a cane as usual, but uh, I'd be open to try different things. It just depends on. Nah, I'd just take daughter's cane. I, why do I have other armies, Neil? Ugh, why? <laughs> why do I have? They're other fun armies? to look at. They're, They're fun fu- to look. They are so much fun to paint. I enjoy every army I've ever painted. Ugh, but <laughs> I think which which army was it? We should um, we should do a Chuck challenge where he has to pick one different army to play for six months. Oh God, <coughs> you'd have no that. that... <sighs> I wonder like what you, I wonder what kind of withdrawal you'd have. Like I don't know if there's a Warhammer patch we could put on your arm. <laughs> Is not playing Warhammer an option? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's never an option. Okay, I don't know. I think we'd have to tie that to some sort of like people donated certain thing to charity for someone i, I don't know I'm not every gonna, level I'm, is another month <laughs> yeah yeah that cool oh, that'd be oh look at that i want ideas man chuck that's, you, what, that's where i was before you are okay well then figure out how to grow this podcast because i'm not trying to do that <laughs> if it's kicking me off i'll give you the password uh, um so yeah that's that covers a lot of news i i like i said i hope knocking on wood that I get into brew hammer. Um, oh, I have one more quick shout out to good, good friend. Uh, brother from another mother, Alex hit hammer over on Instagram. Uh, he, as of yesterday, officially joined the thousand pound club. Thousand pound club. What are we doing? So in a single day, uh, pretty much within like a say this, like a workout, like, so like within an hour, um, maybe, that's not like an exact, but like within a couple hours. So your same workout, you go in, you, your bench, your back squat, and your deadlift total over a thousand pounds. Nice. Yep. He hit that. He got a thousand fifty five. I remember how thrilled I was because he was with me last March when I hit it and I got a thousand twenty and I wasn't expecting to get to it. And even he, he was the same way. He's like, I just, I, I just felt something. And I just did it. So like, yeah, congrats to him. Um, Goodness. Yeah, no, he's he's crushing it, um, and he's he's out there to help people. Um, so definitely check out his Instagram if you want some uh, help getting healthier. He's also like a registered nutritionist. Um, so yeah, definitely definitely check it out. Congrats to you, Alex. That's a phenomenal feat, and welcome to the club. <coughs> we have a uh, we have protein cookies every Tuesday at our meeting. Um, we take we take a. Uh, you pick things up and you put them down. Yeah, pick it up. You pick up, you pick up the heavy thing. You put it down. Yeah, and then we meet. You meet three to five days a week for forty-five minutes at the local gym. <laughs> you, sorry, <laughs> I said I'm. I'm tired. I'm. I'm finally feeling well after being being on that concred. So it's my mind's just kind of like rambling as opposed to just like being like just a flat line. I do have to say. Yeah being sick and like not having not much else to do besides just like sit on the couch for a few days i have ingested more warhammer content than i have in a long time because usually yeah. i've been enjoying like different types of content like history mostly history actually um <laughs> now that i think about it like history doc- and just doc documentaries but i've watched everything that like for like, like the past month that i've missed of two plus tough warhammer weekly um uh, table talk tactics uh re-rolling ones just like every battle report i just have it on because it was just like i could just watch it and it's warhammer so i know what's going on so i didn't have to think too hard about what was going on mm-hmm. and i'm not having to make any of the tactical decisions so i'm just enjoying what two people playing a game so mm-hmm. yeah. that was that was actually really nice to kind of like get all that back in um but we should probably talk about kansas city or i should talk about kansas city a little bit mm-hmm. Um, you have the, you have the floor. <laughs> you have filling for me as a cough here. Um, actually, I I might I did record a little vlog 
um, kind of like I did my the San Diego one. I don't think it's as good. I'm trying to edit it. It might not go up. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm just not sure if I like what I did because like I, and it, that doesn't help too. If you like watch it, you can see me getting more and more tired. Like I, I didn't get any concrete till I got home. Literally, like the day I got home, I took a brief nap, woke up, and was like, oh no, I feel sick. Um, wasn't wasn't anything serious, but like you could you could see in the videos like each day I'm getting more and more tired looking. It's like yeah, because I'm probably like caught something <laughs> <laughs> so it's like i don't know how exciting that's going to be so i might not post that one but for everyone here uh flew out to kansas city missouri for the u.s open uh this past past week and the first thing i have to say because we've been all over the place i mean i i, I am blessed to have the life i have to have gone to all these places just to like to warhammer like i've seen i've seen the country because of it like already in just two years time um saying lots of ums too oh well kansas city missouri i had expectations of it just being like cause i've never been to the heartland of america which is that's like dead center i've always flown over that i expected it to be kind of like meh flat corn it was a pretty cool city i have to say kansas city missouri the airport was interesting it was not it's a very very interesting airport like each set of gate 10 gates has its own security which means you're in and out real quick but it's just very odd um it works it's fine uh the city itself because i i guess it started I landed on thursday morning and uh you know no one's around in the airport because usually you know we like to ride share with our, our co-workers but i came in at an odd time so it was just me I'm like all right i'll get an uber <coughs> So I got an Uber. There was this guy named William, and he had like almost twelve thousand rides in a five star rating. I'm just okay. This guy's been around for a minute. This Lexus pulls up. Now I didn't order an Uber X. Uber X is like you want a luxury car, you want the leg room. I just ordered an Uber, basic Uber. You know, it was like forty bucks. That's not that bad. He rolls down the window, and there's, like, this jolly old guy in full Kansas City Chiefs gear. He's like, you Chuck? I'm like, yeah, are you William? He's like, yeah, get in. I have all this leg room. Turns out this guy's been doing Uber since it started, like, eight years ago, which is why he has so many trips. Turns out his wife got him hired for the job to get him out of the house because he was retired nine years ago, and she was apparently driving, or he was driving her nuts. <laughs> and he and he, he laughed he said like he's like no i needed a hobby i didn't really have anything going on so my wife was in the right and you know what i really enjoy this it's like is that why you drive like a luxury car around even though you're not charging for that he's like yeah i just like having fun and meeting people and this guy was just so much fun to talk to he's like you know let me take you he's like are you in a rush i said no not really and i said you know like I, i'm just getting there set up and all that Took me a little bit of an extra long way, like an extra five, ten minutes, nothing extreme, just to show me a better skyline of the city. My good, and like he was telling me, like you need to go to, the, to this place to eat, this place to eat, this. I was like taking notes. This guy loved his city. He loved what he was doing, and it was just like such a great start to a new place. <coughs> and like, man, I I hope he gets to do that every day for the rest of his life because he he really enjoyed it, and it made it such a difference and i have to say the city itself remind me a lot of pittsburgh steel you know there's steel bridges the roads kind of overlap in weird ways even though they don't have to in pittsburgh we have to because we're like on top of each other because it's crowded by the three rivers but like here they just did it because they felt like it i guess <laughs> but very cool looking city uh get to the venue venue was venue was you know it's a it's a Marriott. They're always nice. We tend to use those for our conventions. <coughs> Excuse me. So nothing, nothing, you know, outlandish there. Uh, it was nice. It was solid. We had a good setup. Um, we had a kind of a two for the event itself, a big room for 40K and uh, Kill Team, as well as the 40K narrative. And then, like, there was, like, a, a another smaller room next to it. So it's kind of like... Like a quarter of the Age of Sigmar room was open to the 40k room, <coughs> and then the store kind of sat between the two for like 
people come purchase and to do all that fun stuff. But you know, it the the soundproofing and the ceiling was really nice, so it wasn't too loud. You know, we had carpeting on the Age of Sigmar sides, so people's feet weren't hurting. Uh, staff were very great about taking you know like the garbage cans out, so they were never too full. There's always fresh water for everyone to enjoy. The event itself, all of them went wonderfully. Um, I I. At 40k, there's uh, I think I heard like maybe twice of like, you know, a couple people getting a little like, uh, I guess I don't want to say defensive, but like getting a little too into the game and have to be like, hey, it's just a game, relax. Like I know we're taking it serious, but you know, n nothing too serious. Um, Sigmar, we didn't tell any have to tell anybody any of that. Literally, like our top tables, they were smiling, and hugging because we they, you know, one they know each other, but two, like that's just Sig Sigmar is really chill. But like the 40k seem to go as smooth as I've ever seen an event go as far as um, an event go uh, for, you know, for, for any, anything. So like no, no issues, no nothing. Uh, I think the worst was the last game was kind of boring because they're being both defensive, which I mean, that's a legitimate strategy. What are you going to do? <laughs> but yeah, as far as the games itself, every game I think went wonderfully. The hobby classes seem to go super well. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, Another, I guess that, that 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 technically does complete another round of U.S. Open events. The finale is kind of treated separately, so, um, I, but like I I can't I can't describe enough how happy I am <coughs> that the uh, Sigmar community is just so chill and happy to play this game. That's why I'm so excited about Brewhammer and everything too, because it's just uh just a bunch of dudes getting around like literally at a brewery drinking and playing warhammer i mean what else could you ask for yeah i yeah i got i was i was thankful too i got to play a ringer game uh, in the fourth round uh, against a gentleman named andrew i think he's from i don't want to say st louis but i want to say st louis <laughs> he's one of, he's with friends of joe crier uh, if you know him in the community but he was a wonderful dude he was kind of new to the hobby he's an exceptional painter um he had Soul Blight, and I I took the Stormcast Ringer army I painted in a couple weeks, so I got to run that finally. Uh, had a great game. Trying to remember how to play the game was kind of interesting because I feel like cause I hadn't played in like over a month, but you know it was a, it was a good time. And in, in that game, Andrew gave me such a good game that you know that's kind of like <coughs> excuse me, sorry. It's like yeah, I kind of want to play a little more. I want to get some more games in. So fortunately, Cole's leaving and. I don't know if Alex and Ben, my other two locals, who just bought houses in Latrobe, are ready for games yet with their busy lives. So we'll we'll see what we can do, but here's hoping. Yeah. Um. Uh. Congat, congrats. Congrats. You know what? I put them on Twitter. Uh. All the winners. I know, like, like half the winners are still in my head for the Age of Sigmar. Um. But the results are out there for best overall and uh, best general. Um, I don't want to say half of them and forget the other half. So go check it out online. Uh, it's also on BCP, but congrats to all the winners. Thank you for every Age of Sigmar player for showing up with such a great attitude. Um, and also on the 40K, like I said, thank you for all of them showing up for a great attitude. I didn't really get to interact with most of them a lot, but like I said, that event seemed to be the smoothest I've, I've ever seen it. Um, and then, yeah, and then like I said, that was a great city. There was a lot of fun, fun things. I got to hang out, I got to hang out with Martin Orlando. <laughs> uh high elf lumineth good painting man whatever we whatever his title is now uh we went out for a drink uh i think the not the first night the friday night i was there so i got to see a little bit of downtown missouri or missouri kansas city missouri uh which is kind of cool we actually right in the center of it is like this building for the church of scientology and <laughs> Uh, well, here's what I'm gonna say: If if you're a follower of Church of Scientology, you better unfollow me and uh, un turn this off now because that's a money laundering scheme if I've ever fucking seen it. That fucking building, <laughs> like, what the, why do you need like a forty story building with your big name on it to hold like fucking relics? Get fucking bent. I've, oh I've seen one of those. Yeah, it's, it's so uh, stupid. It's like, well, that's like. To be fair, like I've seen some mega churches like that as well. Oh so yeah, those like... those fuck those mega churches. I hate those. Yeah. Fucking Joel yeah. Steeny burning hell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but yeah, like but it's like I just looked like we're just like like that's oh it's so stupid. But you, you oh, but unfortunately it became like a landmark because it's like right in the center. <laughs> 
so you knew like where to make the left and everything found a nice little uh, i think it was called the mean mule they did uh tequila so all like agave um they made it themselves so i had an old-fashioned made of like their aged gold brand Ooh. so it was, it was called a gold fashion really liked it <laughs> sounds tasty yeah it was it was quite good um and then the next night we got a bigger group of folks uh from the team we went to uh another uh we were going to go to this place called belfry um that was recommended to us by by a, a friend friend in uh in uh, of the show uh, which is called casey um but we couldn't make it out there because like this the other thing too like things close early in some of these cities like tacoma things were closed by 10 here things were closed mostly by like midnight and it was like Saturday night, I expect you to be like you know around here. Saturday night, things are open to like two for like the bars, right? Sure, yeah, yeah, Let's, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So it's like it's always odd whenever you're like, really, like okay, but hey, you know, you town do you? Um, mm -hmm. There's this nice. It was um, I forget the name of it, but the the theme of it was like there was a bunch of books that you could just read, like just like shelves of books, and they did cocktails. And it was just really cool. It was a cool atmosphere. Um, oh, and also I should say this is also during Halloween weekend, so like people are in costume the whole time. <laughs> Some of us, a lot of random people, all the bartenders, uh, is it, and you know, so that was that was kind of cool. It was a cool. Everyone was like in good spirits. Um, and then we did find one place that was open till two a.m. We went over brief. I went over briefly. I didn't stay long <coughs> because you know it's Saturday. I still have two more games to get through. Uh, toing. Uh, it's called the Green Lady Lounge. It was like one. Of those, it was like a, just like a old-fashioned jazz club is kind of kind of neat like i said it was in there got some hummus and chips had a drink and then went back to the hotel and had a good night so uh yeah a lot of cool cooler city than i thought it would be kansas city um i won't say it's my favorite city I th that i've traveled to for these events i still think i'm gonna give that to uh uh austin to austin or mm -hmm. san antonio austin it was austin um <coughs> Because that was just more of a fun city. Uh, oh, and yeah, I was told by everybody, including including, including William, my Uber driver, that uh, uh, there is the, some of the best barbecue in the country is in Kansas City, Missouri. Mm. They, they are right. They are right. I would never have guessed. But oh, I mean, they, they make a good barbecue sauce. I know that. Uh, we've got a place called City Barbecue that has different barbecues from all over the place. Yep. And that Kansas City barbecue sauce is pretty good, pretty spicy. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yep. No, it was it was excellent. I, I, like I said, I was I was very surprised by a lot of a lot of things in that city. Um, but yeah, but they said, and then we wrapped up, got on a flight home, came home, handed out trick or treats to the kids, and then realized I was. Coming down a little bit con crud, but like, hey, like I said, that's you here and we're there. That's part of the life. Um, all good, nice and healthy. Getting all rested up for the uh, grand finale coming up. So, Kansas City was a great trip. I, I do hope we go back to that location and venue. It was super fun. <coughs> um, and uh, yeah, and and like I said, thanks again to you know, it, it was fun. It was fun catching up with the staff since I missed Chicago. Um, because like you know, they're they're. You know, they're my coworkers, but like, there's definitely friendships that have developed there, obviously, because it, we're just war, Warhammer nerds too. Like every single one of us just love Warhammer, so it's like if you love Warhammer, you know, like if you have your Warhammer buddies, that's all it is. We're just Warhammer buddies, but we also do this job, so it's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, like I said, events were smooth, great time. Thanks to all the Sigmar players that come out to these because you're the reason I'm there. You're the reason John is there. You're the reason James is there. The other tos. And, uh, you know, it was always nice, too. We got another group picture of the three of us uh, for another year in the books. But, yeah, on to the uh, grand finale, where I won't be TOing Age of Sigmar, actually. <laughs> I will be on the 40K side, because the 40K grand narrative uh, will be happening. So they pulled me over for the narrative on that. Um, I am very... I, I, I don't know what I'm allowed to say and not say, so I'm not going to say anything yet. But I truly, as someone who's been to Steve Herner's events, which I think are the best narrative events in the United States, and the Realms at War events, which were the best uh, narrative events in the UK, uh, I think that torch has passed since Raw no longer happens. Um, 
so I need to go back to the UK and play at the at where they pass the torch to. I think the Warhammer Whitney Club runs it now. Um, but regardless, I I I feel safe to say that I've been to the top two worldwide narrative events for Age of Sigmar, and I think this 40k narrative event is going to outshine both of those in a mm. lot of ways. Now, there's always going to be something. <coughs> I don't think we're. I don't think anyone's ever going to beat Steve's tables. I don't think on the raw side anyone's ever going to be the creativity and it infuses in individual players with their characters that they create. There's always going to be something that, like, you know, from every event, it's always going to outshine anything else. But the level of effort I'm seeing going to this is just bar not amazing. It's it's going to be, I think, the world's best narrative event if we pull it off. <laughs> well, yeah, which making me want to go. I, I, I mean, it's like I said, it's the tickets are, you know, up there in price. I think they're $300 a ticket. This venue is pretty expensive as well. I mean, flying is not cheap right now, now that that's hard to clue that in because <coughs> that can go up and down but you know this is you know this is not a cheap trip uh for people who are doing this uh, unless you're going to the finale for the best overall or you know uh best in general awards where you've gotten the golden ticket and you're being flown in and you're being treated to the room sure you're going for cheap but you're also there for not the narrative you're there for some competition so congrats they're all there for another reason for people for the narrative that they're all paying to come to this um and then sure maybe they're not staying at the venue they maybe could stay at a hotel nearby sure but to save costs and i don't i don't blame anyone who does that um but i think games workshop uh and specifically mike brant and his team which you know includes me so i'm not trying but i'm trying to not make it seem like it's I'm not trying to fluff my own ego here but like i think because I haven't, I, I'm just being pulled in to be part this part of it. I, I have not been a part of the design of this. I think they have acknowledged and are making sure that the cost is justified for what we're doing. The one thing I can say that is happening <coughs> is what happens at this narrative will actually affect the true narrative of 40k. So, mm. lore writers have been involved. That's about all I know I can say, because I'm pretty sure that's been shared openly. So I, I'm very excited, and I'm also very excited because that means there's a good chance, everything goes well, that we do this for Age of Sigmar, too. But, you know, hopefully next year. Uh, don't hold me to that, because I don't know what those plans are. I'm not involved in that, but I'm going to fight like hell to make sure it happens. So I'm going to give it my all for this 40k narrative. So I, I'm excited to talk about that in full as soon as I can, which will probably be... The first podcast in December. So nice. that, yeah. Uh, and I probably won't do a travel vlog for that one too, because it just, just the structure of what I'm doing and everything. It's like, it just, I don't know where I'd have the time. So yeah. <laughs> so that's just going to be just pure talking on podcast, but like I'll be putting up pictures as, as much as I can too. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think uh, I think I've rambled on quite a bit with that. So uh, safe to say, I'm I'm willing to wrap it up here. Otherwise, I'm just going to ramble more. I mean, we can talk more Taylor Swift if you want. I think I'm good on that. Okay. Well, I and also I am looking forward to after this um, uh, grand finale. It means I have a couple solid weeks to focus and get ready for the Tirathi Invitational, <laughs> which mm -hmm. I feel like I because I haven't put in enough work on that yet. So I got to get my ass in gear on that. I got time. Oh, plenty of time. Plenty of time. But anything else for you here this week, Neil? Uh, no. Uh, I'm going to steal your line and say uh, stay Stormcast strong. Now what are we going to do? Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>